Hello everyone, I'm Arquinon and welcome to on how to use Hell Cannon like a pro. You see, most of you have probably have heard you can guide the shots of the Hell Cannon to do quite a bit of damage. However, as you try it more often, you might have noticed it is not exactly viable, especially in 1v1. Uh, because one, the cost, two, you cannot see the battlefield. Now here I'm going to teach you some really neat tricks that are basically advanced uh, Hell Cannon sniping or Hell Cannon mass murder. Now the first thing you might want to try is the positioning. Hell Cannon is uh, best suited for anywhere on higher altitude, facing towards the most likely direction that enemy comes, uh, comes from. The ideal, uh, ideal place I like to put is right on the front and uh, some halberdiers in the back because most people either use cavalry and monsters or other cannons to take out the, the hell cannon which is a big problem but even then you at most lose 1200 and by the time it's dead because mind you it's still unbreakable you can pay off its cost so that is uh, with the positioning and now let's go for the controls so we have seen how to position it in like a level terrain. Let's get out of this match. And talk about something that is much more interesting. Now what I'm going to talk about is to teach you how to get the most out of your Hell Cannon. You see, if you want to be a real cannoneer and really make a difference, then these are the stuff that are gonna set you apart from just, you know, guiding the projectile and doing some real damage. I'm talking about getting like rank 4 hell cannon on, on almost every match. Okay, let's, let's not be too generous, but say about 2-3 is average, about 200 kills. Let's say the grave guard and all that and see how it is to guide, to give an example on how to guide uh, the Hell Cannonball, shall we? This part is usually covered in the other videos as well, but I'm gonna show you a few neat little tricks on how to get the most out of your shot. So the first thing you want to do when you place your, place your cannon, you pick the most valuable targets. For well, this thing, uh, that's why it's so useful in 2v2, because the weakness with this, you will not be able to see the map, so if you get charged on, or starting to get gen sniped, you will be on your own. But if you have a partner to let you know when things when things are going bad, or when, when the enemy is threatening you, uh, you can just go back and go back to your job with minimum amount of interference. So let's start and see what's going on. So we got into the Hell Cannon, you cannot change the firing angle, but it's highly controllable. Despite what most other people have said, you need some frantic movements, absolutely not true. See how, how just gracefully it flew? You just need to keep it steady, keep it steady, oh yeah, just like that. And boom. You see, even if you do make a mistake, just like I did just now, uh, you can still uh, just point it downwards and hit it hit the ground. It's so the rule is it's better to overshoot than to undershoot Because if you undershoot, it's much more difficult to raise the ball due to gravity uh, Than to do otherwise as you can see as the enemy gets closer my fire rate increases and the actual fire cooldown becomes a problem Now, there are, while we're talking about the cooldown, let's talk about the phases in using the Hell Cannon. This is phase one, when the enemy is coming, you want to shoot the, as mo most enemies as you can, the biggest blobs, so that you do this kind of beautiful damage. Look at this carnage, just beautiful. You can shoot at very close range just like that. Even if you are about to get charged, don't worry, your Hell Cannon is unbreakable. As long as you have three, uh, th uh, three men left to control it, you are still good. 
So this is the second phase where uh, where now what you do is, uh, is now you aim at the blobs. This is the engagement uh, and I'm going to show you how it looks from the outside from an outside perspective to use it. Because this hell cannon is not just when the enemy is coming in, not during, not only during the skirmishing phase, but during the fight phase, it it can change the course of the battle. So let's not waste any time and see how many kills we've gotten. Just so few, a few targets, 117, while the enemy was just charging, was rushing. So imagine if you can get 117 kills. When enemies are charging you, imagine what you can do against an opponent that is taking his time. Now let's see, let's get a replay of a much more realistic uh, fight to see these little factors, this overshooting, uh, blob, how to attack blobs, uh, and how to pick your targets. Let's see here, where is that hell cannon? There we go watch replay here it's a 2v2 battle the hell cannon is most viable in 2v2 I still don't think it is viable in 1v1 even if you can hit them square in the middle it might be viable but I'm not willing to risk it mainly because there's nobody to let you know that the enemy cavalry and the flying units are coming in so let's take a look okay I, I have deployed it on the left this is how it looks from the outside perspective. You will notice that it fires much quicker, and uh, if you're controlling it right, it will hit it, hit them square in the middle. Now, controlling the projectile is, to be honest, the easy part. It's picking your targets, knowing when to back out, and doing those uh, interesting maneuvers at the project, those advanced maneuvers at the projectile. Remember, it's better to overshoot and pull it down than to undershoot and pull it up. So as you can see, we did some quite a bit of damage over here. 46 left, 108. They begin with 120. So about 12 of them are dead. Again, 20 of them are dead. Sorry, 13. So one shot. One shot, just huge damage. Not to mention the change in the health bar. See how fast it is firing right here? This is all about practice. All about practice. Now, as you first try it, you might get frustrated and try to just uh, wiggle with your mouse. No, don't do it. The way you control this thing is you point the camera slowly. Remember remember the way I did it in the in the first part? Just slowly. The show the direction, guide it, let it fly, feel it. It's it's like flying a plane. You don't just frantically play with the stick. Ooh, that's that's a one good idea. You see, the, uh, when it comes to picking targets, cannon rates are ideal because uh, uh, hell cannon does magical damage, which does which does full damage to cannon rates. Also, the, one of the reasons why you want to do one damage, uh, one shot at every unit, is to lower their morale so they will rout or will crumble and took damage from that. There's no reason to just shoot these zombies. Boom, another blob. In order to guide the projectile down, you put your, uh, pull your mouse uh, up. Let's speed this up a little, you get the general idea. See these cairn rates have been disabled and thus far I have missed only one shot. Like now they're they're just gonna die right here. Whoop! That's that was an interesting miss because uh, you can also hit your units with this obviously. You don't want that. And now we see the blobbing phase. See I have protected the hell cannon with some charge. But because these units were damaged, they're not gonna do much. Uh, here we are tagging these units. Yeah, let's call this tagging. You want to tag every major enemy unit at least once with the Hell Cannon. 
so that their numbers will go down and they'll be cut down into more uh, piecemeal size, if you will. Under normal circumstances, these guys would devastate these Chaos Warriors with halberds. But this is not a normal case, no sir. You see them coming in. The Cairn rates are getting annihilated. They did about 50% damage to these Chaos Warriors. Normally, just one of these units can kill these Chaos Warriors. Now, two of them cannot kill it. And now, here comes the Blob. See, there's uh, a little bit of a miss. Oh, speaking of which, in water, the fire extinguishes, so you lose the splash damage. There's still a bit of splash damage, but not as much. At least from what I have observed. I might be wrong on this. So here, yeah, you position your forces in a way that you have direct access to the enemy's blob. And now look at this damage. It's just unbelievable. It's all about positioning. It's all about positioning. And here we have disintegration, zombies going out. Now, I made a little bit of a mistake here. Ideally, I should put Hell Cannon slightly more behind so I can arc the uh, fireball over the over these units and right in their faces. See how fast it is? Boom, just almost almost immediately. One, two, it's I think it has about three second cooldown. Because they're so close I can switch quickly back. Oh yeah. Let's make it quicker. Just look at this damage. Like, my melee units are just doing some minuscule damage, the Hell Cannon that's doing the most of the work. And if you use it right, this is, this is a common, uh, this common occurrence. And it's very fun, I must say. See, now he has used his uh, Volgurf to charge the Hell Cannon. Not a problem. It's defended. It's unbreakable. Use it. You've got to use everything. Yeah. And boom. Alright, I hope this demonstration helped you a lot. As you can see, okay, let's compare the difference in comparison to a normal cannon that could fire its entire duration to Hell Cannon. Mind you, this has also killed some uh, cannon fodder troops. While the cost effectiveness that this thing did is rank 3, from 0 to rank 3. No other unit that I have seen could manage to get something like this. 250 kills. My opponent has deployed uh, 1300, it killed 250. This is approximately one-sixth of my opponent's army, and this took out the most expensive expensive units. And this, my friends, is how, how you use a Hell Cannon like a pro. I hope uh, these tips over here will help you. And uh, I will see you on the battlefield.